<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are almost starting this webinar. Uh, now we are in 29, 30 people attendances that are connecting. I think that we can wait for a minute because the number of uh, people is rising quickly. So let's wait for another meter, minute to start the webinar. Yeah, it's, it's rising fastly. Okay, the number of attendances is rising, but uh, we are reaching really a good number. We are close to 100 attendances, and I think that now we can start. So as a first, uh, good morning to everyone. I'm Elisa Furlane. I'm a researcher at the Foundation Euro Mediterranean Center on Climate Change, and I'm currently involved in the Division on Risk Assessment and Adaptation Strategies. I welcome you to this webinar that is held by my colleague, Salvatore Causio, who is a researcher in the Division on Ocean Prediction and Application. Salvatore joined the CMCC in the 2016 as a research associate within the Division on Ocean Prediction and Application, and from the 2020 is a member as a postdoc of the Research and Innovation in the Forecasting and Advanced Modeling Group within the same division. Uh, he has a master's degree in coastal and marine biology and ecology and with a PhD in biological and environmental science and technology from the University of Salento, his research focuses mainly on waves and the interaction between waves and hydrodynamics at both regional and coastal scales. He is also involved in the study concerning coastal oceanography processes, seamless approaches between scales and structure grid modeling and storm surge forecasting. But what is it going to present us today during the during this webinar? Today it will tell us something more, as the title of the webinar suggests, about his recent modeling activities concerning the design of an ocean digital twin supporting modeling of seagrasses meadows on the wave field and the consequent evaluation of the role of seagrasses meadows in terms of their potential and performance on the wave attenuation. Um, I will say that it's a presentation that explores a relevant and cutting-edge topic which relate to the investigation and modeling of natural-based solution potential in reducing climate-related risk in a specific vulnerable area that is the lens, lens interface among marine and coastal areas. The modeling approaches and the results that Salvatore is going to present us today during this webinar um, they will focus across three main focus areas in Emilia-Romagna region with application made within the Horizon 2020 operandum project. Then it will focus on uh, the modeling approach that is uh, under development within the Venice Lagoon phase study with a focus on salt marshes restoration potential, a study that is made within the Horizon 2020 risk cost project. And finally, almost the uh, recent application within the Civitavecchia port within the Renovate project. Uh, but before uh, starting with the, let's say the presentation made by Salvatore, I would like to introduce the Euro Mediterranean Center on Climate Change Foundation. That is a research center on climate science that is based in Italy. And its mission is to investigate and model our climate system, but especially the interaction that the climate system can have with the society in a way that uh, through our research project and application, we can provide scientific knowledge and timely scientific results to stimulate dialogue, sustainable growth, climate adaptation planning across different systems and sectors. Um, the CMCC was firstly established in the form of a consortium uh, company and it became a foundation since the 2015. Its members, uh, as you can see from this slide, are members uh, uh, from different Italian university, research center and international organization, which allow to complement the CMCC expertise in different direction and allow for uh, interdisciplinary research within the climate science and modeling. 
um, to this aim, and thanks to this, uh, let's say, uh, collaboration among different institutes, uh, the CMCC is organized in a network of thematic centers and groups that are distributed, as you can see from this map, across the whole Italy, with the foundation headquarters that is located in Lecce, in the southern part of Italy, and the other offices which spread and are located uh, in Caserta, Sassari, Viterbo, Bologna, Milan, and Venice. This topic center then converge in nine research divisions, which are devoted to the climate simulation, prediction, and modeling, up to uh, the evaluation and modeling of risk, risk scenario, and identification of potential solution to face and adapt to the uh, identified risk and impact across different system and sectors. So, uh, with division which allow to uh, support the sustainable management and adaptation planning. Different division which collaborate across project and activities and synergic organization which allow for an interdisciplinary research to allow to address the different dimension of climate science and the related topics. Another peculiarity of the CMCC is the supercomputing center that was made operative in the uh, 2008 with the computing and storage facility that were upgraded last year to finalize and activate the new supercomputing center that is now located in the new CMCC headquarters in Lecce. Last but not least, the CMCC is particularly active and involved in the communication and education activities with the sharing of scientific articles, publication that, is, that are made through the different nine divisions that I previously presented, but also with the development of educational protocols programs and events and communication and dissemination activities which allow to share the knowledge and uh, try to, to reach different target audience. So how the webinar will work today? So uh, as you uh, have already understood, I suppose your audio and video are deactivated by default. And if you want to take action, intervene and pose your question to Salvatore and me, uh, you can use the question and answer section, or maybe you can also raise your hand feature that are all uh, tools and options that are located in the bottom part of your screen. Um, as a final re remark, I, I would like to uh, remind you that this webinar will be recorded as all webinars uh, are organized and made by CMCC, and then we will be uploaded into the CMCC YouTube channel. So you can find uh, uh, all webinars that has been already made in the past, and also the webinar that we are going to see today together in our CMCC uh, YouTube channel. If you have any further question about the webinar, please, uh, uh, feel free to contact me, Salvatore, to have more knowledge, more information on the presentation that you're going to see. Moreover, don't forget to follow us on the social media. So remember to follow us and spread our, let's say, information and knowledge through Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube in a way that CMCC words are spread everywhere. So I thank you all. Now we are me a very good number 133 and i can leave the floor to my colleague salvatore to to present his fabulous uh, research okay. i leave you the floor salvatore thanks elisa i'm going to share the screen okay Yes, okay. Everything's fine. Okay. So first of all, uh, thank you to join this uh, this webinar. Uh, today we will talk about uh, the role of seagrass in uh, attenuating wave, but also we will discuss a bit how we improved, how we um, include this, uh, let's say, this interaction in a numerical model. I would like to start this discussion today uh, with the an emblematic picture, I mean. Uh, in the past, when we observe a beach like this, uh, we had the feeling that this is not so healthy place. This is uh, a beach on which uh, dead Posidonia, but in general, marine plants are, uh, let's say, beached. And so they represent a not so well place to have uh, a bath. But later we understood the importance of this uh, 
Oh, there's also this organic mother, dead organic mother, which is there on the beach and is protecting the beach itself. In fact, we call it also the term now of ecological beach. Okay, I, I understand it's not always possible to leave this structure, which are called banquets, always there. Uh, because, for instance, a near city is not so nice. I mean, but we have a strict regulation now uh, for uh, the displacement also of this uh, structure. But of course, uh, the role of uh, marine seagrass that are not just related uh, to uh, dead mother, because they have a lot of services. They provide to us but, and cost to an environment a lot of services. Um, this is uh, is from several points of view, because from biological point of view, they provide shelter to species, and it's very, very important nursery area for several phyla. They represent corridor between habitats, so species can move di through different habitats, and they represent, they provide a lot of foods. But they are important from, also from chemical point of view, because they concur in the production of oxygen for um, for the sea in the in the sea, but they are also able to clean our water because the nutrient cycling. So they are not just mother of um, I mean uh, being there uh, or providing services in some way. But um, another point of view, very important, is that this species is or or better, this ecosystem provide coastal protection. Coastal protection means. Uh, that they can stabilize the sediment, they can trap sediment, but they can protect the coast, or even uh, dumping waves and current. And we will mainly focus on this two uh, last sentences. I mean, and but before going ahead, I would like to stress that um, the importance of uh, this uh, uh, species it, it, or this ecosystem is. Uh, they are living beings. I mean, they are able to grow, to self-repair and to adapt. This means they can be part of a mitigation and adaptation of coast ecosystem in general with respect to uh, the climate the climate change. There is a, a general agreement now that, and a growing um, awareness about the fact that nature is providing us services, good and services. So now it's not a matter of having nature outside our life. We need to work with nature uh, because nature can provide, uh, sometimes we can say a new solution, but probably it's better to say also ancient solution in which nature can help us in facing with environmental changes, environmental risk, induced also by the climate change. And this is what they, we call in general nature-based solution. And this is one of these nature-based solutions is what we are going to see together today. Um, of course, as I mentioned, seagrass are living beings and they are treated um, but by several points of view. From land, for instance, just thinking about uh, um, the, the agriculture, for instance, pesticides and chemicals which flows towards sea, but also the cities, so urban waste or building infrastructure, but, and more or most of the impact is related to, to the sea. Just thinking about fishing, boating, anchoring, uh, harvesting, but also invasive species, which have begun now an, an important pro problem uh, from different point of view, because they can feed on the seagrass we are considering now, or they can compete with the resources. And all these treats together with uh, other um, induced a strict uh, decline in the last century. So we have a global issue, which is uh, the reduction of seagrass all over the world. Okay. Um, Let's think about uh, what we said before. This means that we are losing uh, species, we are losing ecosystem, and we understand that they provide services and goods. And this means we are losing together with ecosystem also some services. In fact, in the scientific community, there is a, a strict interest to the interaction between wave and vegetation. 
And uh, in general, the, we can subdivide this work into two main uh, pillars. I mean, one is related to laboratory field. Uh, one most common is, for instance, this experiment, the Anderson Smith experiment, in which they build the wave flume experiment with the synthetic vegetation, and they um, uh, measure the, the wave uh, dissipation, and they provide uh, very important insight about this uh, this topic for uh, laboratory itself, but also for numerical modeling. Uh, in the numerical modeling, also CMCC is involved, and uh, we recently published a first prototype of the digital twin of the ocean. I mean, when I say digital twin, I would like to express a concept which is uh, um, a digital replica of the nature in, on, of, of course, on our computer and trying to simulate all interaction as possible, all processes possible. So we are trying to, uh, in some way, reducing the complexity, but keeping uh, a certain uh, level of, still a certain level of complexity to understand more. And this is most important when we are moving towards cost, and all process related to uh, cost, I mean, and uh, all the activity also related to cost. Um, in the first prototype of uh, this DTO, uh, we adopted two different simplification. One was related to uh, the most common way in introducing a vegetation inside the numerical model, which is the rigid cylinder approach. So it, this means that vegetation inside the model is considered like like uh, rigid sticks. I mean, and the other point is that uh, in the first uh, prototype, our uh, uh, model was not coupled, so it just interacting hydrodynamics and waves, which was based on unstructured meshing, and uh, the hydrodynamic model was shy from an API, a three dimensional finite element model, and a wave watch, uh, which is a wave model, which uh, interact just with vegetation without exchanging field uh, between them. Uh, of course, today we will mainly focus uh, on, uh, on waves. Uh, the wave model is wave watch we adopt is uh, wave watch three, which is a third generation wave model, which solved um, uh, wave action density balanced equation uh, by um, wave number and direction spectrum. And this action, wave action is uh, computed as uh, uh, sum of a source and sink for the wave energy. And within this sink, we have s both, which is here is highlighted. And uh, um, s both here is the sink term for the, uh, the sink term for uh, the bottom dissipation. Here we added the component for uh, the dissipation induced by vegetation. The equation was from the work of Mendez and Lozada, but uh, instead, I don't want to go uh, in detail through the equation, but I would like just to say that uh, in this equation, we are able to include the phenotypic characteristics or characteristics of the plant, which are, for instance, length, width, thickness, shoot density, tissue density. And uh, by using different characteristics, we are able to describe inside our model different species. For instance, in Europe, we have four different species. And uh, if you would like, we can include all the different species together in the same uh, in the same simulation. I mean, this means that we included into this way what we could call also uh, digital biodiversity. Preliminary results of this, uh, uh, let's say our uh, first uh, approach, I mean, what we can observe here it is, is a generic wave field in which we uh, can appreciate how much is dissipating this approach. This is in the left plot. Here we have the distribution of the cigarettes we included into the model. Um, and this is what we found also in literature. Um, at the, and we can conclude that uh, adopting the first approach of the rigid vegetation, we have uh, a system which is, uh, it's, phys it's physical, I mean, it has a physical meaning, but requires specific calibration for the sites, but also for the vegetation. 
and uh, we would like to go a bit uh, farther. I mean, of this uh, this type of this approach. So we had uh, um, an investigation literature. We found several way, several several um, uh, way in which the flexibility can be introduced into our model. We adopt the Luar and Nap um, method, in which uh, again, without going through the equation, but it's just matter of say that uh, we have two different module. One which is uh, uh, a buoyant module, another is an elastic module, which allow us to change the uh, length of the vegetation or the leaf of the vegetation according to the water motion. So we are mimicking in some way the bending of the leaves. And we have uh, uh, a first look to, to the results. Of course, we have we uh, observe immediately that dissipation was or wave attenuation was lower. In this plot here, we have our benchmark, which is uh, a vegetation. So let's say uh, we watch as was born without any vegetation module. Then we have a case in which we included the vegetation using uh, uh, the rigid approach without any tuning, so as uh, just as default parameters. And here in the third plot, we have the, the uh, vegetation, so the module with the vegetation uh, in which the flexibility is taken into account. On average, for instance, over one month, we have a uh, lower uh, attenuation, but it seems to be uh, more reasonable. I mean, it's not so strong as in the first case. Um, and what is uh, important to stress here, we don't have too much time to show you uh, several conditions, but is the the percentage of attenuation, of attenuation, wave attenuation is fluctuating, is according to the wave condition. So it's not just matter as, for instance, the rigid case in which higher the waves, higher the dissipation. Uh, we said we said that our results could be more reasonable, but how we can validate? We found the literature, a very interesting study, which is an observational study, in which uh, Infantes uh, in uh, 2012 uh, measure uh, wave attenuation above seagrass meadow. This is uh, um, a Spanish bay. In green here, you can upset the distribution of seagrass, which is in this case is uh, Posidonia Oceanica, and they measure in point one, two, three, and four, uh, different, uh, they provide us different time series of waves. And so these, they can compute in this way the attenuation through this uh, transect. They measure wave by using ADV, and they uh, provide a lot of, of data to us in this uh, in this paper because they provide the depth profile for uh, for the area and they uh, provide also specific characteristics of the plants exactly what we need and so what is the best option so we, here we have really to appreciate the digital twin so we duplicate the same experiment or better the same observation from infantes in our digital twin but here we have our numerical domain. Again, in green, we have the Posidonia. Um, uh, the depth, of course, is uh, in agreement watched, uh, with, uh, with Infantes. And, but we are going just to take in consideration the point one, which is the offshore, and the point uh, four, which is the near shore. We will see uh, why. These are the time series provided by uh, Infantes. They measured waves for a couple of weeks in July 2009. But for our uh, experiment, we consider just the second week. I mean, just because in the first uh, uh, in the first week, we have all time series are wrapped together here with very, very uh, low waves. And we will consider with the red arrow, the uh, point one, with the green arrow, the time series from uh, the point uh, four. This is a, a simulation, let's say a sketch of what we did. In point one on our domain, we imposed the red arrow, I mean, the waves from um, Infantes in point one. So we imposed our boundary, we let the model propagate and dissipate waves, and then we measure in point four. And these are the results. 
In black here, we can appreciate values from infantes. In solid is the point one. In dust, we have all the dust are at in position four, near shore. So in uh, uh, color here, while in black is uh, the observation, in color we have different numerical tests. And uh, in green, we have a wave watch uh, without any uh, without any vegetation module. This is exactly, let's say, our benchmark, let's say. But then we apply the rigid approach, which is in blue, with a strong, very high dissipation. And in red, we adopt the um, vegetation with the, the flexibility introduced. So if we had a look, for instance, in the second peak, but even in the, the first, we will see how bad, how uh, almost perfectly fit the near shore uh, flexibility test case. Um, on average, we improved in this simulation, we improved the statistics bias more than 50% and more than 25% in, uh, in, in error, I mean, root mean square error. But if you can appreciate how much is good during the, the events, we can uh, really um, uh, intend how much we can be comfortable with, with this, uh, this result. So um, when we uh, assess and concluded the first part on the vegetation, we moved to uh, improve the second point of the, let's say the second simplification of the DTO that we have. Here we have a, a representation of what was the first prototype in which Shytham and Waywatch was separated course interacting just with vegetation. And now we are moved to a more complex system in which we develop an external coupler, which is able to uh, manipulate exchanges between components. And uh, doing this is not just matter, of, I mean, sending fields between components, because we include a new process. In this case, for instance, in the case of hydrodynamics, we are taking in consideration uh, wind stress, which is dependent by uh, wave condition. Or, for instance, bottom or stress is dependent again from both presence of waves and hydrodynamics. Or uh, we uh, improve it also. We ad added an additional component for momentum flux due to the presence of waves. On the other hand, uh, the hydrodynamics is affecting waves. For instance, in just providing um, the currents, uh, having. Uh, including the effect of Doppler shift or refraction, for instance. And when we consider the flexibility in vegetation, we are taking into account both currents and uh, bottom orbital velocity from uh, the wave model. And again, we include no new process. We have to validate. Um, we adopt here an idealized test case. The name is the Tidal Lillet. It's a very well-known test case in validating wave current interaction. As you can see here the, in the left plot, we have the domain with a bay of constant depth communicating with the ocean and through a channel. And the ocean has a specific uh, bottom slope. The time series, sorry, the uh, plot we are going to see here in the middle are transect from point A to point B. In the top, we have uh, sea level. So the effect, the, how we can appreciate how sea level changes when we are considering a two-way interaction between waves and current. And this is the same, but for waves in the bottom panel in green here highlighted. The dashed line is when we consider two-way interaction between. And so you can appreciate, so the wave induced um, uh, set down, a wave induced set up when in the sea level when you included also the with the waves, and when we consider here the the wave height, we can appreciate how earlier shows the waves and steeper becomes the waves when we included the um, the the currents. I mean, and we compare this is a qualitative uh, comparison with the work with was already uh, let's say well. Uh, known and uh, already published in 2014 is the Cobb and Blaine experiment, in which they uh, reproduce exactly the same what we did. And you can appreciate how the structure 
uh, can be comparable in this case. So we obtain our toolbox and we are moving now to, uh, to three different applications. Uh, they are located, all of them are located along the uh, Italian coast, Emilia Romagna, Venice Lagoon, and Civita Vecchia coast. In the first application, we adopted this uh, uh, digital twin for uh, a couple of purposes. Because in the first case, we would like to assess the, the wave dumping. I mean, but at the same time, this is for the operandum project. We uh, would like to understand even if different spatial pattern for seagrass could have different results in wave attenuating. And here we have four of the landscape we tested. And uh, we concluded during this study that uh, the distri special distribution for seagrass is quite important and is affecting um, the wave attenuation. So this should be taken into, into account when we are thinking about the restoration for different purposes. In the other um, application, the REST COST project, uh, we assess the role, so the ecosystem services provided by Seagrass also marshland, but we will not focus on that uh, today. Uh, so we are going to assess the role of seagrass in protecting the Venice Lagoon. Because Venice Lagoon, you, or you know, uh, where about the fact that it's dipping. Uh, so it's deepening and because of several purposes, but it's uh, in some way seagrass and also marshland protecting the, the lagoon. Uh, because we know that we are losing uh, seagrass, we are losing marshland. So could be this, uh, the question is, could be, um, let's say, uh, the lagoon more affected by climate change, for instance, in the future, if we are continuing to lose this. And we concluded that the waves is protecting in some way the, la the lagoon. In fact, we have a, an average dissipation, wave, in the, uh, uh, wave dissipation attenuation around 10% uh, 10, 10 but this is uh, almost related to the area where the vegetation is located while when we consider the current the near bottom currents we can appreciate how much the uh, seagrass are protecting all over all the lagoon i mean it's quite a diffuse effect uh, the the presence of vegetation and uh, in the last uh, uh, application, this is in uh, Renovate uh, project, we assess, uh, so we uh, move from uh, a Northern Adriatic Sea, we move to the Tyrrhenian Sea, we are close to, not so far from Rome. There is uh, this arbor here, which is the Civita Vecchia, it's quite important. And this, uh, this is undergone to um, uh, several said, rebuilding of infrastructure. And for this, uh, reason they have uh, so local authorities have to compensate the impact that they have into the environment. For this reason, they have to um, activate some uh, uh, reimplantation uh, of Posidonia oceanica in uh, in the nearby of the harbor. And we apply the, this uh, uh, digital twin to assess where is uh, let's say what what are the main uh, the area more suitable for the reimplantation this is because uh, in the past in the area uh, some uh, attempt on uh, of uh, reimplantation has been carried out some of they file failed because of uh, strong waves hitting the area in this case we apply the digital twin exactly to understand uh, where we could go without reducing let's say the possibility to lost the rain plant. Um, I would like just to say that, for instance, in this case, we have a, a, in front of the Civita Vecchia Arbor, we have a buoy which is located two kilometers offshore. And when we compare our results, the results from our digital twin towards a, a generic problem, which is, product, which is in this case, it's, well, let's say a strong product, which is Copernicus, uh, uh, from the Copernicus Marine Services, we can show that we improved in some way the capability to uh, simulate waves. In this case, we have uh, we are close to four meter of wave height, but not too much. I mean, we reduce bias, we reduce the error. But please consider that when you are 
using this type, which is uh, the Copernicus product, which is region regional, you cannot you cannot appreciate what's happening at cost. In fact, here uh, in the main, uh, let's say most of the domain here is constant, and this is uh, the blue line is uh, uh, the nearest point for the regional product. In fact, if we change uh, and we just to, to show you that if we get different uh, time series in different place, Copernicus is still providing the same results. Why we have a very, very different condition. And again, of course, if you apply to this uh, very high resolution model, again, also the uh, CGRAS, you will have again, new process to take into account. And this is what we uh, obtained from our simulation. This is the uh, bottom current velocity during uh, one storm. This is just an example. And in the central plot here, in highlighted in uh, uh, red, you in, in gray, we masked the bottom velocity where uh, is not possible to uh, proceed with the reimplantation of Posidonia. Because we had a study in which Posidonia for the area, it should be localized between eight meter and 12 meter of depth. With uh, shallower than eight meter, the, for sure Posidonia will be destroyed by waves, which becomes too uh, strong. But if you go deeper than 12 meter, because of turbidity of the area, so light, light is not able to penetrate the water reaching uh, and providing enough uh, to light to the to the to the the cigarettes. and for this reason we here we allied just the orbital velocity uh, near in, within the range of interest and uh, with different color we identify specific area where we could go ahead uh, with the, with the transplantation and where we couldn't uh, go with the, with the, this restoration activity. But then we for sure we don't know proceed directly because we send the scientific diver to check in situ if it's really possible to have in this area uh, the uh, reimplantation of the plant and selecting also even small smaller area within this larger area. And this uh, help us also to have uh, I mean a more resilient way of uh, uh, going with the restoration. Because if we missed something, we uh, didn't understood something. So a storm is able to destroy one of the implantation. We have more other, we have tens other. And so we can, in this way, provide more resilience to this, this type, uh, to, to this uh, intervention, I mean. Uh, we are at the end of this talk. Let's just summarize the important topic, the point that we have. So we understand how important are the seagrass, but they are treated. So we need to think about conservation and restoration activity for, for the, this meadow, this important ecosystem. We understood a bit more about vegetation, the physics of the vegetation. And we understand also it probably is better to include um, the, the flexible uh, formulation for the vegetation in numerical modeling. We had the look to coastal processes. So we understand that if you want to study uh, the near shore, we have to include the new process due also a new interaction, uh, which are probably more very, very, more to, very uh, important. Um, we, uh, another point is that uh, we validate our formulation, our model, in some cases towards a dialysis test case. This means that we don't have always observation to validate. So observation, they are fundamental also in, in numerical modeling uh, for several uh, purposes. And uh, we had also the idea that how uh, versatile is the, this, this uh, DTO. We have a modular approach which can help us to understand and to study different uh, processes. For the future, we are going to extend the digital thing that we have now, including also another core, which is a sediment core, uh, which allow us to study new processes for 
uh, coastal zone. And uh, another important topic is that uh, um, with, always within the renovate project, which is related to Civita Vecchia, um, we are partner with the University of Tusha. They have this autonomous vehicle, which is able to map uh, the, the bed, the bottom of the ocean, and also is able to um, understand and to measure the height of, uh, of the seagrass, the height of the, the length of the leaves. This means that we can include into our DTO also uh, new characteristics. I mean, so the seasonality, because um, in uh, uh, the length of the seagrass change a lot during the year. Uh, but to here, of course, we don't have any data, so we consider it just an average length of the lift. But using this uh, uh, technology, we could also include the, the seasonality of the lift length within our uh, simulation. And uh, I would like to thank you all for uh, uh, joining this uh, webinar. And I would like always also to uh, thank all the contributors to this, uh, this work. Uh, so please, if you have any question, we are happy to answer. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Salvatore. Thank you for really this uh, valuable presentation, which touched a prominent topic that is that of the natural based solution, but especially the evaluation in a pre-planning phase of the performance of the natural based solution to mitigate uh, uh, climate related risk along a coastal area. That is a very useful tool to drive a future adaptation planning and the streaming on natural based solution on what is now the pre topic of the transformative adaptation pathways. Uh, there are several questions, but maybe I can break the ice quickly. Uh, I was particularly interested on the, the modeling made through the DTO. Um, and especially you already share something, you already say something during the take home messages slide. But please, can you tell us something more? And especially, uh, which are the key other value of this modular approach that really allow to, to shape um, and really describe our complex system? Yeah, thanks for, for the question. Yeah, this is uh, one of the most important um, point and all this uh, DTO, the modular approach and the versatility. So we are building something more complex, but even we have, uh, because we have a now more efficient computer, you know? so it's complicated uh, to include processes sometimes. But including process means including interaction, which uh, with, the, uh, let's say, a model standalone is not possible to take into consideration. And we can study this uh, interaction, even removing part of the system, trying to assess what's, what's going on when I switch on or switch off some component. But at the same time, for instance, in the case of uh, uh, Emilia Romagna, it's important because uh, we can uh, uh, appreciate the role of something. In the case of, for instance, uh, the landscape, the distribution, the spatial distribution, you can just manipulate the reality, which is not possible to do on nature, I mean. So we can play in this way, trying to uh, study really the effect of something. So I can, I don't know, uh, change the shape of one wetland if I have a restoration, for instance. And then I can, uh, we can suggest, because in general, we uh, rebuild uh, wetland because it's important, for instance, for bird nesting. But from a uh, numerical point of view, I can say, okay, but probably if you are going to restore this wetland and you will uh, build in with another shape could be also, could be even better for all the downstream processes which are uh, say sheltered by this. That's one of the, let's say, most important topic, I mean, point of view for, uh, for this yeah, yeah, application. Yeah. Definitely. And it allows also to move on let's say on scaling up processes to identify the right pathway to scale up this kind of solution yeah. in a way that you can simulate uh, the processes. I can start with some of the question which links on what we just shared. So uh, Christian is asking about, uh, in addition to the presented mid of condition physics, did you find differences in wave attenuation values considering different bottom slope? Uh, in the case of uh, the flexibility, the attenuation, it's, uh, it's quite dynamic. I mean, 
um, in the case of the rigid vegetation, uh, what we observe is that we have, uh, in general, an increasing of dissipation when waves become higher. While, uh, uh, and this, this is important, the, the point is that it's not, uh, I don't want to say that the rigid vegetation is not working properly. I would just say that uh, this should be tuned uh, uh, carefully. While uh, in case of uh, uh, flexible vegetation, uh, this is in some way able to self-adapt to the bottom slope, uh, to the wave condition, because uh, um, the vegetation, the attenuation is higher when waves are low and uh, when also the, um, the depth, the, wa the water depth is uh, shallow. Uh, but it starts to decrease the attenuation when you go deeper and when you have higher waves. So it's a quite, uh, let's say, uh, vers how can I say it? Uh, it was self-adapting in some way, according to the bottom slope and wave condition, yeah. Okay, um, there is another question by Lisa Bruil that is quite linked. Uh, you mentioned that the spatial distribution of the seagrass influences, influences the extent of the wave attenuation. Which spatial pattern was the best, worst in terms of wave attenuation from the study that you did? Yeah, what the, uh, at the beginning, when we tried this, uh, this, uh, this study, uh, our uh, probably less, our understanding was, our thinking was that if you fill all the area with uh, seagrass, you should have uh, uh, highest attenuation. But what we try instead is to have a different patches. And uh, we observed that in uh, LS4 was the name, but uh, this means that we have a broken stripes and some cluster of uh, some patches of uh, uh, seagrass. We obtained the uh, higher wave attenuation. So the highest protection for the coast. And there are other questions which, uh, let's say, um, try to understand also the cooperation with other researchers working on the role of seagrasses. So to what extent the cooperation with the researchers which focus on the same kind of ecosystem uh, is made in place for taking into account also underwater biodiversity and CO2 sequestration? Oh uh, yeah, we are in cooperating with the several divisions, but also several universities. As we work, uh, uh, for instance, with University of Venice, and uh, we are mapping for this. We are providing our data with uh, uh, to uh, University of Venice for uh, producing new Eunice habitat maps, for instance, for the Venice Lagoon. Uh, we cooperate also with the University of Tusha. Uh, they are very strong pattern. They have very strong capability in observing. So we uh, we are, and I would say that we are a, an integrated uh, working group. I mean, uh, with several uh, uh, several uh, uh, background, uh, trying to assess and to understand this topic uh, in uh, in a more uh, general way. I mean, uh, holistic way. Also, because if I'm not wrong, also with the discussion uh, that we had, there is also the aim to, uh, in, also in the last slide, to nest other modules which allow also to evaluate the potential of uh, natural blue solution and seagrasses uh, in terms of uh, uh, water denitrification. Uh, I mean, to evaluate the potential in terms of water quality. Exactly. We, this is the next, uh, further next step because we have to include sediment, and then we have Look at the future. more, yeah, to the the biogeochemistry. Okay. Uh, there are other two uh, participants. Uh, they are asking. I couldn't get the name of the model used. Could you please mention it? You can also specify, uh, Salvatore, the different seagrass species that have been modeled uh, yeah. in your study. Okay, we used uh, as numerical model uh, Shivem and MPI, which is, uh, let's say, is a, um, an adaptation of, our, of the Shivem module in which we developed here at CMCC, and they are finite element model. 
The wave model is uh, Wave Watch 3, which is a state of the art, I mean, in the wave simulation. And this is a community model you can find. Uh, uh, I mean, it was at the beginning was developed by Noah, but then it's more to be um, a community model. So you can find it for free on, on GitHub, for instance. Um, according to the different species, yeah, we have uh, four different secrets along the European coast, uh, but uh, into the model and both for hydrodynamics and both for waves, they are described by uh, phenotypic characteristics, as for instance, in the case of, uh, uh, we have Posidonia, which is the, let's say probably the most known, but also Zoostera and Shimodosia. We are the four different species that we have, uh, and they change according, for instance, in the density, uh, the, the shoot density, or the width of the leaf, the length of the leaf. So we, uh, in general, we work with uh, uh, literature. What, but we, if we have data from observation, okay, it's, it's still better because, for instance, in the case of the Renovate project, the University of Otusha have a lot of data uh, measure there. So we adapt our model to the specific Posidonia that we have there. I hope it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a question. Also because it connects to the concept of the suitability of the certain measure that is then uh, evaluated in its performance. Uh, there okay. is one question that is a little bit, not tricky, but anyway. Mm -hmm. I always thought that wave dumping by vegetation is highly dependent on water depth and to some degree on wave period. Would you reduce the height of a seawall that protects against flooding during storm surge condition because seagrass has been planted in front of the seawall? Ah, uh, <laughs> I mean, we can, uh, uh, let's, let's say, this is a, a green solution which or a blue solution we could say, but uh is not so uh let's say is not the the solution to all but in some way contributes to uh, attenuate the the waves if we reduce the waves we are in uh, also we reduce the currents uh it's important we can reduce the sea level but uh, um we we tested in different way or better in different application the role of uh, uh, the vegetation in attenuating storm surge. And I would say that uh, if you are considering, for instance, just the littoral, uh, we cannot appreciate any effect on, uh, on the sea level. But we have uh, uh, quite interesting results when we move to investigate the role of vegetation in case uh, as uh, the Venice Lagoon. Because uh, uh, in that case, we have just three main inlets, which uh, uh, allow to the lagoon to communicate with with, this, with the, the open ocean. In this case, uh, attenuating waves or reducing also the velocity inside could allow to the storm to pass in some way, is limiting the flowing inside of the lagoon and is it's protecting, is keeping, let's say, lower the sea level for a bit of time. Let's say in the meanwhile, outside the level is, is gone down again. So it's protecting in this way. But if you consider to protect coastline, just uh, putting, uh, uh, I mean, a seagrass meadow in front of Brackwall, for instance, uh, at least for sea level, I, I suppose is not possible to protect. Uh, you can you can protect by, for instance, sediment uh, from a ro coastal erosion. Yes, but not in that case with the, against the sea level I mean, rise. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, also because a combination of different solution that can be gray and green solution, maybe uh, it's what yeah. we can plan for phase with the climate related leaks, especially taking into account coastal area that given that are the, at the lens interface, they are threatened by both land and sea-based pressure. But as you say, there are very good uh, example of, uh, uh, let's say, restoration of a natural ecosystem that then played a crucial role for mitigating coastal erosion. And there are several uh, 
a good example in the Apulia region, for instance, in the southern part of Italy, where the presence of seagrass is made of reduce, attenuate the weight, uh, the wave energy along the coast, and also the restoration of dune was, uh, let's say, fruitful, was effective for allowing for reduce the erosion and uh, change the sedimentation process along the coast. In uh, I'm talking about, for instance, the Ugento municipality in the Apulia region. Yeah. Um, there are other questions. Uh, could you share your thoughts on the effect of seagrass on the beach evolution, which connect on what we are saying? For example, seagrass may block onshore transport of sand, which will be detrimental for beach natural beach restoration. It's a matter of balance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is uh, okay. This is uh, uh, what we are uh, including now, as I mentioned about the sediment, but. Uh, for sure the what we call the, the beginning of uh, the discussion the ecological beach uh, would be let's say the best option i mean so keeping uh, uh things as nature that should be the best option because it's trying some way to protect the coast itself in some cases they build but even meter of uh, of, of beach when you live uh, the, the Posidonia there. I understand that it is not always possible to uh, keep the the leaves there because uh, okay, sometimes for instance, if you consider a blanket close to a city, sometimes uh, the mm, deterioration and degradation process can be can produce even uh, bad smell. I mean, uh, but. Uh, uh, for instance, it could be uh, we can try to find the balance between uh, our uh, what we expected by the beach. I mean, just how going there to to be to live in a, a let's say smart, a cleaner way, place, and uh, um, where the nature can uh, protect the, the the beach itself. I mean, we can also try to uh, dedicate a specific part of the species to natural process, trying to uh, trap the sediment where they occur or sediment uh, the, to have, a, let's say, deposition process in some area and trying to cleaning uh, less, but just where uh, where we have to uh, to have, for instance, you no know, buff from uh, from people who want just want to go uh to, to the coast i mean yeah and this is a matter this is a i mean your comments comment uh could link a hook with the application that you did in C civita vecchia civita vecchia littora because basically there you're working with the suitability mapping so where exactly. the transplantation of seagrass is made of is suitable given the condition the environmental condition anthropogenic pressure which arise from the cost so and the study was a little bit different from the other two because it gave uh, uh let's say emphasis on the concept of uh, uh, moving on this natural based solution pathway, but taking into account their suitability in yeah, a way that we also uh, direct the economic efforts and something that is suitable and allow for a, a good performance and uh, let's say successful results. Last question, and then uh, we can conclude. But I think that this is a relevant question that can empower uh, your sharing today. Will the method results also be transferable to seagrass, in, for example, in the North Baltic Sea? You show three different applications. What do you see with a similar application? Uh, I mean, the transferability of your model in the North and the Baltic Sea. Well, this is, uh, is, this is uh, one of the uh, pivotal points of this uh, type of application because uh, it's made by bricks, by module. Uh, you can uh, adapt and uh, it's, you can adapt to the different scenario. The fact that we presented here three different projects with three different times, this is just to show you that uh, uh, an application like this could be useful in, uh, in several, under several scenarios. So we could also uh, apply uh, this, uh, this digital twin in other parts of the world. Because uh, I mean, it's quite, uh, it's uh, let's say it's a self relocatable, I mean, uh, uh, structure. So yeah. I completely uh, be uh, say, um, I completely say that yes, it's possible to, to apply somewhere else.
Good. That is really good. I think that uh, uh, we receive uh, several questions and very useful to better reveal the potential and uh, what is next for this modeling approach. Uh, I thank all the attendants to this webinar. We touched this uh, valuable, relevant topic uh, uh, through this webinar that I'm pretty sure that will be even more prominent in the next years within the challenging topic of transformative adaptation planning. I really thank my colleague Salvatore for uh, presenting this, uh, uh, I mean, really cutting edge topic and uh, for exploring the possibility of the DTO for evaluating the performance of the natural based solution for moving on this transformative adaptation pathway. I thank you all attenders and uh, I think that we can close. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all.